What's up, Broods and Broodettes? It's the Pico Dudes. I'm Sam Rother, and with me, the man who wants to screw the dark, dark brew. Oh my god, I had something completely different. It's Jeremy Adalgo! <laughs> oh, dude. This this isn't starting well. Uh, well do, we can, we, do we cut that part? Should we cut that, or just drink and keep going? Drink. Keep going. Drink with us. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. This is one of those times where I'm super happy to drink, so... Why don't we introduce the brew that we're going to talk about today? What have you made for us? Uh, this is Banger Brewing Black IPA. Banger. Banger. What could you say again? What, what was that? Black IPA. Okay. So a black IPA, which is just like a regular <laughs> IPA. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but more dark, chocolatey, malty. So you still have high alcohol. You still have a lot of hop. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the characters of these black IPAs is tons of hop, but still using the darker malts. And as you can see, this is a dark, dark beer. Um, the spoiler, this is a SRM of almost 40. So mm -hmm. dark beer, but with a ton of hop. And another spoiler, I kind of like it. I've kind of been drinking some I of like it, too. I kind of like it. I, I really do. It's got, uh, a, it's got enough bitter. My tasting notes are just... Mm. It's got enough bittering... To to counteract all of the 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 additional hop aromas that you get and some of the um some of the there's a little bit of a citrusy flavor to it and like a normal IPA would have but then there's just this round like multi balance to it that I really enjoy. You're totally giving away the ending. Sorry. No, that's all right. And with that, people dudes out. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Shortest episode ever. So let's start with Banger Brewing because these guys uh, are really cool. And I say guys, Banger Brewing was really. It was started by five guys, mm -hmm. and they all spent a long, long, long time working together in the hospitality industry down in Las Vegas. So they got to work together at a, I don't know, maybe you can guess where it was. Have you ever been to a hotel that had the coolest yet most annoying drone show you've ever seen? Drone show? Yeah. No. Just thousands of drones just floating around in the air making shapes over a bunch of fountains. Oh, like at the Bellagio? <laughs> okay. Yes, like at CES. And, yeah, those and, drones, by the way, when they're not doing the fountain show, they're like spying on <laughs> hotel windows of all the other rival hotels. Exactly. So um, these, these, these people all work together. Five individuals work together at the Bellagio and, you know, spend a lot of time getting to know each other, developing a love for the uh, crafts industry, restaurant industry, service industry. And they finally had kind of... I think separated a bit and come back together 15 years, uh, this went on, and said, hey, you know what? We want to do something together. Mm -hmm. Let's build a craft brewery in Vegas. It's not, a great not idea. a place known for its craft breweries, by the way. A place nope. known for its alcohol. Yeah. Um, most alcohol consumed per capita of anywhere in the world. But uh, not a place known for its craft breweries. So they traveled around, looked at a number of breweries in the area, that whole southwest region. Worked on creating their own brewery, and they brought in a, a guy, Michael Banger Beeman. Mm -hmm. Banger. It's kind of a nickname. Okay, got um, it. And he was, became the brewmaster and also sort of namesake of sure. Banger Brewing. So they're right there. Um, we've been down in Fremont District. Yeah, in fact, my brother works there yep. at, at Atomic Liquors. Yeah. Yeah. We've been in there. We've checked it out. We've drunk that place a few times, that area. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we've, been, we've enjoyed that. But you know what? I didn't know Banger was down there. Otherwise... We would, we're just gonna have to go there. We're totally, especially after tasting this, we are going to be there um, probably January. Sounds um, good. We'll go hit it up. But uh, like I guess they're doing some really neat things there and um, they are, are setting sort of the craft beer standard there in Vegas. So, yeah, uh, thank you guys very much. Uh, we're looking forward to coming out and seeing you. Yeah, first neat thing they're doing is this Pico Pack right here, this Black oh IPA. Goodness. And they have others. I am getting their other Pico Packs, I can just say, after trying this. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this one. I had not tried it at all. Um, Until I, we took yeah. our precips. So, so it fermented. <laughs> pre I'll tell you, yeah, our pre-drinks. Pre so I'll tell you how, how I brewed it. How'd um, you brew it? As per recipe. Um, I basically got the Pico pack, opened it up, mm. put it in the, uh, in the machine and let it go. It fermented for 15 days. So I let it, I let it hang out in the fermentation. I cold crashed it for Chill. one. For one day? I put it, I put it in the refrigerator last night 
Oh my gosh. And then I force carbonated it today. Like when today? Like at two... <laughs> like three hours ago. Like at two o'clock. So those people who are like, hey, I brewed a great beer and I think it's going to be good, but I got a party tomorrow. I don't have time to get this thing carbonated. So I've got a method to take cold or, well, force carbonate your to, beer to, that to quickly. speed carbonate and, your beer. And we'll call it like and a Pico worked. hack. I've done this yeah. before with them. We'll call it a Pico hack and, and a do a, well, yeah, we'll do a video yeah. on it. But um, I will say I did post a picture at one point that showed a cascade of beer all over my kitchen. Mm hmm because I did a bad job and I allowed the pressure to build way too high and shoot the regulator out He's the top of my serving cake and just, oh God, it was horrible. Yes. Uh, still, my wife finds spots of beer from that incident. My wife. Uh, which we call it. We call it the beer incident. The, the incident. The, the great incident of 2018. And she, uh, she reminds me every time she finds a spot of beer. I can't imagine that. I am still finding all these beers from that one time that... Anyways, that so, one time. so tell, tell us about your method, though, because I think we have listeners that would love to know, hey, if I want to carbonate a beer this morning that I can drink this afternoon with my friends, what would I do? So first you have to cold crash it at least, cold. at least 24 hours. Yeah, can't steal the warm beer. Second, rack it right into your serving keg. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a method that I've actually used. I've got a bigger corny keg and I've got a kegerator yep. set up from, that I still use today. Um, and... What I had prior was uh, basically I had the I would put it on the outspout um, or the inspout and I put a long uh, put what on the inspout I, I would put the carbon dioxide on the in or outspout first I was doing it on the outspout which which is you got the, spouts yeah there's the longer dip tube that goes down and allows the CO two to permeate oh, yes. through the liquid yes. as as it's injected into the container. You're not talking about this serving keg, you're talking a traditional brewing the, Yeah, for a yes. cor corny keg, for a yep. five gallon or your smaller corny kegs. Yes. Um, the other thing I did was uh, I would put it on the end spout, CO2, and I would have a clear tube that went to what they call a beer stone. So essentially it was this, the stone that had like micro fine holes in it and it diffused the CO2 or the, the carbon beer, dioxide. The beer stone of the bear. Yeah, and it allowed you to force carbonate a beer in 15 minutes. So you can still do that even with these serving kegs. Um, Mosquito! <laughs> you can still do that even with these serving oh, kegs. Oh, I thought you missed. And um, this will be way more fun to watch. Yeah, I know, right? There's uh, something going on. It's a fairy. Um, what I do is I put the regulator on. I dial it up to almost so, serving like serving keg. Put the regulator on just like you're gonna. Yeah, almost carbonate for a few days. Exactly. Put it, put it almost to the red line. Almost so like to the red. So like 22, 23 psi. Yep. yep. Lay it on its side. Ooh, and what? Lay it on its side, and this is very important. So cold beer in your serving keg, serving keg, and you've got to hold the regulator on just to make so, sure. Yeah, because also I did this outside today, just just in case. Smart. Yeah. Um, and then you you gently roll the serving keg back and forth. I, this I looks horrible. So uh, I'm not gonna do the motion anymore. But you roll the serving keg back and forth okay. for about a good 10, 15 minutes. And what you can hear is you can actually hear like bubbles going into the, it's, it sounds like somebody's blowing bubbles in your serving keg. That's actually the CO2 being forced out of the regulator and the liquid is absorbing it. So that's how I, I, I quickly force carbonated this. And I'd say it could use maybe a little bit more carbonation it, but not it, much I, I think because it's a dark beer, beer it's perfect because it's a dark beer and it's it's got a good amount of bitter up front if you get too much co2 involved then it's, it's really it sharp. starts to have a really yeah like a yeah. sharp bite to it um and, and i have to say coming out of the tap room because that's you're, you're doubling down you've got a force fed system coming in. your turn get get him oh that's a whole nother that's, that's a moth we've been we've been infested you've folks. got a menagerie of bugs in here exterminator in here they're <laughs> loving these beers um drunk moth i they we're using the tap room and so we have an additional um co2 that we are helping serve from which is not necessarily adding any to the beer but helping deliver it and that give us a nice head and yeah, you can also force carbonate out of the tap room. I wouldn't, obviously you can't you roll, roll, it, roll it around or anything like yeah. that. But um, but if you give it like two days, you know, you can you can do a very good job of getting the perfect amount of carbonation on the tap room. Um, How big is the CO2 tank on that tap room? 
I don't remember. It's like about this big. <laughs> it's 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 bigger. It's like that big. It's Whoa. like a. I, I think it's nine ounces. How long? How many beers can you carbonate and serve with that? I understand if you're just serving, you could probably serve a lot of beer. I think I think you can carbonate and serve like two beers. Okay. Um, and that one served the Anotter barley wine that we just reviewed in the previous episode, which I just finished off last night. Mm-hmm. Two and a half weeks after doing the the episode yep. where we, uh, where out we out of a serving keg. Yeah, out of a serving keg, and it was. It was as fresh. It actually got better. Um, it was as fresh as the day we, we first tapped fresh it. Fresh as the day it was born. Which I think is a huge, huge nod to what the tap room can do for you. So, um, you know. Tip of the cap. Tip of the cap. Thank you, tap room. You're, yeah. I almost said you're welcome. Like, I, I was had something to <laughs> do with it. you, tap room. <laughs> um, and so, why don't we talk about this delicious beer you've made us. Um so on the website describes this thing as velvety mouthfeel, perfectly balanced with hop bitterness. And that's all it says. That's when you go and look at the description. So people may not be buying this off the store because that's not much description to run yeah. off of. But I think they nailed the description just to start. Nailed it. Totally nailed it. My first Perfect. thought, I am drinking this out of my Guinness Pico Dude glass that was specially etched at some event we went to. And... Um, at first, I had mouthfeel and color of a Guinness, mm-hmm. but then it hit with this hop. Yeah, the like presence is just, yeah. Hop presence. And you know me, not a hop head, not big on the big piney kind of hops. Um, and I've really steered clear of a lot of hoppy beers. This isn't a low hop beer. No, it's so, so I ended up uh, putting the dry hops in about five days after uh, mm-hmm. I started the um, fermentation. Normally I do it about three. Life got in the way. I remembered. You forgot. I remembered I just had one five days so in. Yeah. Go. So, so I, I got, got it. In. Yep. Like, and so the, the hops were in there about, you know, 15 days. They, like I said, oh, they got great. They got racked today. So the hops were in there up until this morning, this morning. Excellent. And, uh, but man, it's good. It like it doesn't have any of the grassy flavors that you sometimes get when you have your hops in the dry hopping in there for too long. Yeah. It doesn't. It's it's um it's more of a citrusy kind of a florally. But it's weird because it's in a dark. I mean, there's dark malt. I don't know yeah. the malt used in this. It didn't list it. But this is a dark malt. Yeah, it's it's, it's gotta have some marisot or it's kind chocolate. Of really nice roasty flavor. Sure like does. it's yeah, it, like you said with the with the Guinness and kind of a little bit of a like an espresso or a, mm-hmm. man, it's just good. And so, uh, and I don't know if you know the stats on your beer, but I looked them up. Do you know uh, what IBU you would place this at? Uh, it's ninety two. Ninety two. Ninety two. Yeah. I mean. Ew, who wants to drink 92 IBU that beer? That does not taste like 92. That doesn't, if I saw the stats, you know, you're looking at the stats and 36, 24, 36 yeah. or whatever it might be. If you looked at the stats and I would go, oh, SRM of 39, IBU of 92, mm-hmm. and an alcohol of 8.2%. And I'd be like, not for me. Well, I would choose it because I love dark beer. You, t- you got, I see you're showing off the I Love Dark Beer t-shirt. Yeah, I'm not just pointing at my nipples. Yeah, I shaved it on my chest, but oh, I won't show anyone. You did? Oh, that's incognito. They'll have to they'll have to watch our video review on the tap room to see you shirtless. Oh my gosh, that does not count. I hope that never posts. That probably won't post. Um, we need to redo that. <laughs> four seasons with the tap room. Um, where were we again talking about? Oh, the stats. When you uh, look at stats like that, I would normally say this isn't a beer for me. Yeah. That's a collection of big numbers that uh, normally wouldn't draw me into drinking something, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, it's it's so it's just so well balanced. It's just a good full bodied, well balanced beer. You know, you're talking about dry hopping, and I have heard a number of people. This continues to be a subject that's discussed on the Facebooks, etc. When do you add your dry hop to your beer? And for a while, I was going with three days before you plan to rack, mm-hmm. based off of something I thought I heard. And discovering that my beers did not have the full hop flavor and aroma I wanted. You've been going with three days after you add your yeast, right? So three days after fermentation starts? Yeah. So so I've been doing that, but I think I think there's really no wrong answer. I, I, I was yeah, doing no that wrong. 
no well no so so there's there's a couple of schools of thought on this like i i've been adding it three days after or five days after in this yeah. case but because we have a podcast and because we've got a bunch of pico packs oh, yeah. that we're trying oh, to just... run through and try and yeah. get ready and and have stuff every week so we can release stuff I feel like at times I'm, I'm sort of rushing the beers, just yeah. a little bit pushing them, maybe. like So a Nodder Barley wine was a good example. Uh, sent Stephen Yahtzee. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Stefan Yahtzee. Stefan? Stefan Yahtzee. Sent him an advanced version of it. And besides the fact that we can't pronounce his name right, um, he did say, he was like, look, if you lay that beer down for a good four to six months and basically just cellar it, yep. Um, a lot of that alcohol flavor will will sort of dissipate, and you'll and he's dude, he's doing some really cool stuff yeah. with that beer. He's like adding oak to it, and he's doing just like adding just a bunch of really cool stuff. I actually hope we get to maybe go get explore, or yeah, even get to see if explore that a little located. bit further. But um, but the thing is, is with dry hopping. So when I first got into home brewing and I was doing extract home brewing and then all grain home brewing, like you would do a primary fermentation. You would do a primary fermentation, your big five gallon glass oh, carboy. <laughs> and, and when that was done after seven to 14 days, just like we do with the Pico brew, you would then rack it into another glass big, carboy. Big carboy though, like big. <laughs> yeah, more than, more than five liters. And then so you, would, you would then add your dry hops. And that, that could stay on for the same duration that you did yeah. the fermentation or longer. Um, and so you can do the same thing with your Pico brews that, that um, you do there, which means you could go through your entire primary fermentation, rack it out of that serving keg, then add your hot packets and go another seven to 10 days if you wanted. Yep. Um, but you should do more than three. You should definitely do more than three. And I've even heard of people who add it to their serving keg. And mm -hmm. at first I was like, oh, that's crazy. Not a bad idea. I think we've even seen Danny come on and say, oh, yeah, I can see that. That's actually a way we do stuff sometimes. Yeah. So I would say getting them in there early if you really want a distinct beer and not one of those, oh, every beer kind of tastes the same things. Um, get them in there early. Be aware that when you open up in your first two to three days of fermenting, you got a lot of that Kreuzen buildup that happens at the top of your brew keg. And if you just drop that hot packet, especially if it's not a ton, but you just drop the hot packets on well, there. And if you're doing the way you should, you should just take sanitized scissors, yes. cut, off, cut off the top of the plastic thing and dump those in there so you're not touching the hot packets. You shouldn't packets. be touching anything. Yep. So I do the same thing. Sanitize scissors, I sanitize the packet before I cut it yep. open. And you, you, you drop it in there and you don't want that thing open for a long time. But the problem is, is if you just drop it in there, close it up, you have that Kreuzen buildup, it can tend to float on the top and yeah. sometimes not even get down into the beer. Um, so you have a method, I think, where you shake it up. I have a I method. Give it, I give it sort of a, a swirl, like a, a gentle swirl. swirl. A gentle swirl. I give it a swirly. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, I have something where I have a, a, a metal a fork that has been sanitized that I use to... Why? Why are you laughing? Nothing. You you nope. Know. We're not going to go there on the okay. podcast. Middle fork. <laughs> and I, I tend to thrust it into the liquid and hold it, kind of the packets down until they, those dry hot packets uh, absorb some moisture sure. and are able to stay under that croissant because I've started adding much earlier too. Yeah. And I've noticed a, a massive difference in my beer. So much more aroma, so much yeah. more flavor. I was worried that the it would start to break down that this grassy hop would break down and start giving me really weird, like um, you clean out your mower bag, you forgot to empty it. Oh, at the like, end of like fall. decomposition or something. Yeah. And it does. I, I was surprised that I started going on online learning, man, you can go a month or more. It takes a oh, long yeah. time before that starts happening. Yeah. Um, you don't have to worry that, oh, 10 days, I better throw this beer out. It's not like that. Yeah, I'd say the, the biggest danger is maybe adding it too early. So sometimes sometimes if you add too it... Too early? Yeah, if you add it like... Like well, in the middle of the brew? Or or right like right away. Like if you... Well, yeah, in the middle of the brew. Or like as soon as it's like a day into fermentation. Yeah. Or if you add the hops in before it even starts fermenting, yeah. you could maybe pick up a little bit of that grassy flavor. Yeah. Um, you want fermentation, it, it, wait for your firm. You'll know. Yeah. If you open it up or if you're not getting pressure on your yeah. eco firm or. Although I've done it before 
Uh, and I think we had one of the episodes. I can't remember which one it was. I was going on vacation or something, and I had oh, to throw yes. those in because I had brewed them the Steam night Ray before. IPA? I think it was. And you threw it in and it sat for like a month? It sat forever. And it was really good. Yeah, I, but I think because it sat for for so long, you know, it was able to sort of clean up some of those so flavors. But that that is a, just a, it's yeah. a danger you, you run, uh, or a risky run, I should say. I'll take the risk. Take the risk. So, so getting to this beer... Um, We've already given you kind of the uh, the abridged version, but would you be so kind to pour me some more? Let me do that. I uh, and I was gonna. <laughs> you were gonna talk, but I totally just cut you off because I need some more of this beer. And it's we've we've talked a little bit about what we what we're tasting, and um, we've established that it's it's got a Look good at that beer. Look at that pour. Look at that good beer right there, and that's that pour with that perfect wow. head that's just sticking there. That beer was forced carbonated hours ago. I wish you guys could smell this. Yeah, I know. It smells so good. <laughs> what are you picking up other than chocolate and espresso? I mean, it's very hop forward. But, but you get yeah. But so, what hop are you picking up? That's and, and I don't think, God, I can't remember if I remember the hops off this. They're not hops that I've seen used before in a beer. Yeah, I don't know that I, I'm I'm familiar enough with hops in general to be able to give a qualified answer to that. But it has that it has that definite so it's a so it's a upfront sort of a citrusy um I, I pick up a little bit of a grassy flake like a grassy aroma but just just a hint and then it kind of fades away into a little bit of a like a i get a smoke do a slow do a slow deep hold on you, you know what you do well you could do that you should start by a little a little out. a little huff and don't take that long sniff This is riveting podcasting <laughs> this is, right here. This is, hey guys, how would you like 30 more minutes of <laughs> listen to a snuffle our beers? Yeah, so there, there's a smokiness to it. Yeah. Um, there's, I'm trying to hone in on the hop flavor. I, I'm almost getting a little bit of like a tropical sort of a florally. It's hard because we picked that up earlier. But when you combine that with, with, with the, 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 the chocolate and the dark malt, it, it turns into more like a you know a dark chocolate, not a dark chocolate, a bitter chocolate. Yeah. Have you ever had those chocolates like when you were a kid? Cacao. Cacao. And you're cacao. like, oh, I got this chocolate. It's gonna be so good. And you take a taste, you're like, that is the worst chocolate. You're ever like, had what the hell? Did you're I a just, kid. And yeah. you're like, where's my Hershey's chocolate it's like, bar? It's like grabbing Baker's chocolate when you're oh. a kid and thinking you're about to be in what for is this something. Yeah. Flavorless stuff. But it's not like Baker's chocolate. This is like the that cacao because it's yeah. got that bitter kick but it's not a bad no um, it's at it's all it's delicious in this beer in the hop bring it i want more ibus give yeah. me all your ibus right now because this is delicious I, i'm i'm a fan i re i was really scared i was thinking this was going to turn out sort of like the the center block cascadian dark ipa or cascadian dark ale a little bit when CDA. yeah and and um i don't and, remember was that one not great it I don't know if I goofed it up, but it wasn't awesome. It wasn't awesome. Okay. It was. It just wasn't awesome. It it wasn't horrible, but it was sort of a subpar, slightly like maybe par beer. Um, okay. This this one, in my opinion, is way better than. Yeah. I, I mean, this is. I think I can safety safely say it's cracking my top ten. Yeah, um, it's 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 pry barring its way in there. I think this is going to be a great Halloween beer because I believe this episode will probably come out on Halloween. Yes, it will. We are moving our uh, release dates to Wednesday. Wednesday. So Wednesday evenings, our new podcasts will be released. So what will be neat about that is nothing. I'm sorry. Um, what? I was going to say what it would, would be, be closer to when we podcast. but It'll exactly. be the same day that it'll, we're actually doing our recordings. Um, but it'll be a week after. Yeah, it'll right? be a week so after. So be, we're going to be recording one week before it posts. Today is the Wednesday before Halloween, and so this will be posting in one week, and uh, it's delicioso. Yeah, and we're going to be... Dolce. Delicioso. Delicioso. So we're also going to be running a, uh, an, a campaign, right? We're going to, we're looking to Another get campaign. more, more patrons and more um, YouTube channel subscribers. Subscribe to us, please. So if you can do this, we're looking... <laughs> if you can, 
for the eight of you that know technologies. No, not no, no. If you can, do, I want to hear but, the if you can do this. But it, but but if this is something that you believe in, if you want to hear more of what we're doing I'm and so to or you want to support our pro- podcast, then um, we're gonna maybe ramp up our production level and see if we can hit like level two, two, right? two episodes a week. Two. I'm going to be so wasted. Well, but that's the fun of it, right? Um, we will no longer take vacations or see our family. But uh, no, so I am I am with Jeremy. Um, we we started this as a lark. We started this as for us, completely for us, which is why we are so inappropriate and so childish and no apologies. Also non-technical. Like, no, oh God, we're idiots. Th- this, has become, this has become a huge learning experience. Like I, I was, we got comments at the beginning of like, well, it works really good. You set yourself up as the expert because you've homebrewed before. And then Sam, <laughs> Sam, Sam, to be the Sam, Sam's like the guy who's just learning. I'm like, fucking, we're both just learning. And like, this is, I thought I knew a little bit about homebrewing. It turns out I knew a tiny bit about homebrewing. We've learned so much through this journey. Well, and 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 we're gonna start taking. Um, so the YouTube channel will be a bigger presence. We're gonna yeah. be looking at creating more videos, more how tos, more Lots tips more and how-tos. tricks. And then when we find out we're horrible at a how to video, we're yeah. going to re-record and post a new one using all the great comments we're already starting to get. Dude, we've had people that like. So we did we did one on the the racking. bottling and the racking yep. and stuff, and we had great comments. Great like, comments. Hey, this is that's that's awesome. I'm glad you guys did this. Our listeners are so cool yeah. because they're not assholes. Thank you all for being not assholes. I know. Almost every bit of criticism, you might call it that, but it's really constructive feedback that we get is totally well, you know, given in very constructive manner and it's hey, not hey you super morons, but maybe you guys yeah. should try this. And I'm like, "Oh, duh, yeah, we didn't mention that, did we?" Yes, yeah. Well, like we said, when you turn a camera on, it's different. When you oh, know you're being recorded, it's, it's a little so bit weird. different. You forget everything you knew as soon as you're like on the spot. On the spot. Yeah. So, more videos, more content, uh, better, um, what would you say, performance? But, Not performance yeah. quality. I can't. Production quality. Better production quality because this be this 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 all costs money. It takes time. And uh, the more we can show our wives that it there's some incentive behind it. The more we are going to be allowed to do. <laughs> I mean, quite, quite frankly. Do we still have a brick wall behind us? Uh, yeah. Is I'm, that is that I'm, what we're going to have? I'm going to swap it out every episode. Totally throw up. Be like space. I thought that. Oh my god. You, no, it's space. Halloween. You should put a Halloween backdrop in there. God. Now, see, this is going to take more time for me. I've now got to see. Find... We need at least one more Patreon so we can get a Halloween backdrop. I'm going to behind us. I'm going to find the episode. sweetest Halloween backdrop. Uh, though. I am going to be so. You need zombies that walk back and forth like we're. We're in a house. Don't add motion to it's, it. I know, it's, that's it's, even harder to find. It's under zombie <laughs> attack, and that's a window where the zombies are pawing at it. If you can do that, Mr. Adalgo. Can they be drinking beer? Oh my god, zombies that are going beer instead of brains? <laughs> beer. <laughs> beer zombies would be fantastic. I would watch that movie in a second. Where's George Romero when you need him? Beer jo- zombies are like, isn't that what we are? I was going to say, it's just a bunch oh, of we, frat yeah. dudes. <laughs> it's a bunch of frat dudes with their, with their three polo shirts on and their oh, collars so flipped up. So many out. popped collars. Oh man! So uh, um, should we oh, give this a rating? We should. We, we were talking about this wonderful we beer got through aroma, and we gave up. But um, that's a good beer, man. That's a good beer. I like it a lot. I, I love you, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny. Jenny. All right. So um, life is like a box of chocolates. I'm I'm giving this a four. I was at four and a quarter. I am surprised you're going lower than me. I thought you liked dark beer. I'm dude, that milk mustachio blew yeah, my the milk mind. Mustachio, I've got it on order now, and I don't even like dark beer, but I just want some delicious chocolate milk to sip while I'm sitting at my computer. By the way, for like I'm ordering this Pico Pack another time. Yeah? Yes, I'm totally ordering this again. Mm-hmm. I'm going four and a quarter, and I'm doing that because I really like it. I like it better than any IPA I've had except the MB30 so far. Oh, even more better than the the Stingray IPA? I do. I like it better than the Stingray. Mm. This is a delicious, and it could be because it's cold out, it's gotten dark, and it's it's almost heavier feeling. Well, it's got to be. It's almost 9% alcohol, and it's um, thick and velvety. This beer would be great 
Um, if you were to add in my belly. Well, yes, in my no, belly, no, but no, also no. if you were to add a little bit of pumpkin no, to no, it. No, no. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. And that's like some people are like, David shut up. Pumpkin? You just lost all credibility. Don't pumpkin a beer. But can you put the David S. Pumpkin music in? <laughs> Please. I'm David S. Pumpkin. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in the background. Oh my god, dude. Pretty... If David has pumpkin, you can pop up behind us right now. <sighs> you're getting a raise. I mean, you're going from zero dollars to a penny. <laughs> zero dollars. Uh, um, so delicious beer. I'm four and a quarter. You're still four. I won't talk you up. It's cool. No, I, I'm um, I'm four. I I think um, this is this is worth ordering. I we've done a few dark beers, unlike any we've tried. It has some similar immediate flavor that hits your tongue of some of the dark beers we've done but then the hop cuts through it and yeah. to me makes it more interesting not as delicious not as purely drinkable as the milkshake of uh, of your milk, milk mustache you know so yeah and we've almost forgotten denny khan he's like the old girlfriend that i know like denny khan is still like I know I didn't. Imperial Porter, but vanilla, God, bourbon, so... Imperial See, Porter. See, the thing is, though, is like an, the old girlfriend I that, that, that needed so much extra commitment. Oh, my God. She was high maintenance. <laughs> she was the high maintenance because Denny Cunningham, you had all the bourbon, Imperial Porter yeah. stout is high maintenance. But, it, dude, it's it's kind of worth it, though. It's like dating that, yeah. like, 10 supermodel I that's know, like. But Milk Mustachio was the easy, <sighs> easy, just, hey, looks great. Ponytail, glasses, I'm in, let's go. We don't yes. have to get fancy. Looks great all the time. All the time. No makeup. Yeah. It's just good, delicious. Why what what are we doing? Uh well, this is good. Like, so if we go to a restaurant hey, or a bar. Hey. We it, know what's great during the Me Too movement. Objectify <laughs> everything around women. Hey, let's compare this to us being we're pure dicks. I I'm mean, sorry. if we were gay. Dudes, we probably would be con oh. comparing them to oh, to to the same right, thing, right. right? So you would think of a high maintenance. Um, who's the guy who plays Thor? Uh, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. And totally, you know, he's all he's all shaved and super cut, and he looks like that takes a lot of work. Yeah, but then you got the milk mustachio, which is his brother, who's in who's in um, <laughs> who's Liam. in. Yeah, Liam, who's in uh, Hunger Games, who looks just almost as good, but also looks good in glasses. I, I was they... going to compare one. One's more like, boy, if it was still the Twilight times, one's an Edward and one's a, what was the other guy? Edward? Really? What? The what other was... guy? Oh, Jacob? Jacob. One was Edward and one's Jacob. Um, neither one to my taste, let me point out. But one was a high maintenance, purely waxed, pretty boy dresses nice, and the other one just walked out of the woods. But damn, <laughs> am I? I'm sorry, we've lost all listeners. Yeah, I'm. That that would that would have worked. This is my Jacob. That would have worked. This is my Jacob. That's your Jacob. Yes. All right. There. Can we please, please, please not be lambasted for being complete male chauvinist? <sighs> This is a good beer. If I go to a bar and order I'm, this, I'm pour if this is Jacob the first, right it, now. yeah, if this is the first beer I order, I'm not. I'm probably not switching up the rest of the night. Like if the waitress comes back or waiter and and they go, "Do you want another one?" I'm just like, "Yes." yes. Don't bring me another yeah. one. So so that's I think a pretty good bringing endorsement I, mm -hmm. of where we think this one came in. I do. So don't forget, you want one of these cool tap rooms that I'm just pouring these uh, these beers out of. Subscribe on YouTube. To the Pico Dudes, subscribe on YouTube to taproom.club, and you will uh, be automatically entered as long as you have subscribed to both in a drawing for one of these taproom.clubs. That is um, one entry. Shipping paid by Taproom. Did you check with Ketchu? Is that within the continental U.S.? If he doesn't pay it, I'll pay it. Woo! Big bala. That raise is going to come through. It's going to cost like um, 25 bucks. And uh, don't forget, uh, we are on Patreon. We'd love your support. And any of our Patreon subscribers will also get a entry. And if they have subscribed on YouTube and Taproom, well, then they'll get a second entry for being a Patreon subscriber. Oh, cheesy. Thank you very much. Is there anything else we should say other than... Pico Dudes. Out. out.
You've reached the end of another episode of the Pico Dudes podcast. Connect with us at picodudes.com, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you enjoyed our show, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts, but mostly iTunes. Also, if you want a code that will help give you some discounts off of the Pico Brew equipment, Z150D equals $150 off of the Z series. Pro, P-R-O, 125D gives you $125 off of the Pico Pro. And C75D gets you $75 off of your purchase of the Pico C. We hope you enjoy listening. Look forward to hearing from you. Pico Dudes, out.